that's a secret made, <laughs> so uh, it's all right. Um, it's mainly the physics uh, coming into play, like Aston has this heavy V8 block on the front, um, so you have a light rear, so you have, to, of course, to um, prepare yourself uh, for that kind of stuff. You have really well-balanced uh, cor um, corner entry with the car because you have a lot of weight on, weight on the front, but then you have a light car on the traction and so on. So, um, to some tracks you definitely have to adjust your driving style to slow in high-speed corners, but uh, otherwise I think it's, it's straightforward. Well, I think obviously every driver has his own driving style, but in the end it comes down to a quite similar driving style. But I guess all the drivers will feel the car is, is different, but the car will always have the same characteristics. So it's, it's always going to have this little bit, you know, aggressive front with a light rear. Um, but then again, the team can do so much stuff to, to help you on the exits, you know, and there's so many uh, small adjustments you can make that helps you on the exits that actually makes it, you don't feel it's so um, oversteer because it's so smooth uh, nowadays. So there's, there's a lot of things you can do, obviously. Um, but yeah, driving styles are, that's, each driver has his driving style, but in the end, I think if you look at the data, there's not a lot you can kind of say that, oh, this is different compared to each other. No, we, uh, we split it up equally. Like, uh, uh, I think we have good confidence in uh, both ways, so I can easily go in in my chair and lean back and uh, have some snack and a Coke and watch Marco start the race. Uh, and I think it's the same way as uh, other way around. So we, we split it up equally over the races and uh, yeah, we, we always perform to, uh, to the maximum and it's, it's all about the confidence in, in each other and uh, uh, that's definitely there. Um, well, it's, that's actually quite a tough, tough uh, um, answer because you... I would say that we actually got a little bit surprised with the tracks, some of the tracks we came to this year, like Mexico and all this, where we expected like that the other cars would be, let's say, quicker. But there are some corners that apparently suits our, our car really well. Um, it helped us on a good way when we... Because we've been developing with the Dunlop through the season and all this also came into play with for us that it kicked us in the right direction. Uh, and it, it gained some, I would say, some time on the others. Because in the beginning of this season, we were, we were struggling a little bit in the beginning of the season and then we slowly caught up because we actually, the team kept on going forward in uh, in this whole project kind of thing um, and yeah so it's, it's hard to say where we are actually the stronger ones it's it changes from track to track some tracks you actually feel that you, you have a better car through the corners and some tracks you feel that you have a better better top uh, speed compared to the others and all this but so but it changes a lot yeah I uh, came from the um, one mark series like the Porsche Cup and so on where you have your own car you set up the whole thing and then Slowly coming to Audi, where you start sharing the cars in GT3. That's completely normal nowadays, uh, and it's in the beginning it's quite hard. Uh, but you, I, I start really to enjoy it. Like it's a, it's a different factor of uh, racing, uh, where you have to, as drivers, uh, play together uh, in the same way and um, put the ego aside and. Then, Sometimes when you have a good day and the other one has a bad day, you have you go towards to him, and uh, it's both mentally and uh, and car wise, like uh, the setup wise. I think we're close, but I know there's some other guys who want the car difference. Then you you go and compromise if you have a better weekend than the others, and I think that's a really cool and interesting factor in the endurance races. Um, but I think um, doing the race is a bit the same as. Uh, as I always been doing. Um, of course, you always have in mind that you're doing six hours and not half an hour, but uh, you're still uh, on on the maximum what what the car can do and the driver because you got all the best GT drivers in the world out there and um, best factories. So you really have to to be up there. I think at, at Le Mans it's it's definitely a different build up. Of course, you still push. But there's also some different factors that you have to bring the car all the way, and it's and it is 24 hours basically. You have to make make sure that the car gets through. So at Le Mans, I have to say you don't you don't push flat out because the car is not gonna. It's most likely not gonna last. So you just 
calm it down a bit and make sure that actually nurse the car a little bit through the race. Um, and then you're, doing, you're normally doing longer stints down there as well. So it's it's a little bit, at Le Mans, I have to say, it's a little bit different mentality. And when you come back to the six hour races, it's it's actually like a sprint sprint six hours. I think it, it probably looks, it is crazy inside the car, but I think it's more, it looks probably more crazy than it is because they're having their race, we're having our race, and the LMP1 cars are the most easy to actually handle because they come past you quite, you know, fairly quick. Uh, so you don't really have to take care of them. The the worst things are mainly the LMP2 cars because, uh, well, last, uh, in 2016, they were, maybe I would say, you know, they're the same speed as us, basically down the straights. And when there was a gentleman driver in some of the cars, they were not sometimes not even going quicker than us on the track. Uh, and that's that's where you get you have to keep <laughs> keep a cold head.